Steinmetz function, which I'll show a little bit later, which uh, bases the core loss on the peak flux density in the sine wave and also the frequency. It's a, it's a power series. It's actually the peak flux density the, to the power 1.9. So now I can uh, turn to some of the, the code. Uh, language I'm using here to communicate with Quickfield is Microsoft Visual Basic, part of the Excel family. And there, I understand there are other languages that can be used, but this is the only one that I've used. And here I've gone into the the sub or the main the main subroutine. I, I had I had a main subroutine and a number of uh, um, sub methods that uh, do various things. The main subroutine does the sequence thing. And just before I do that, I'll turn to some block diagrams to show how my program works. The front end is is what I call the Visual Basic main controlling program that, that controls everything. And there are three planes of solutions going on. The, the top plane you know, are analytical methods, for example, the Steinmetz function that I, I mentioned, uh, taking the peak flux density and calculating the core loss in watt per meter cubed. That is an analytical function. So I can do whatever I like in there. I have a, a few other analytical functions to do, for example, the nonlinear thermal and electrical conductivity of copper, where done analytically and loaded down into the quickfield problems. And the front end also controls the sequencing. And normally, uh, I have a, a cascade or a chain, a sequential chain of up to 48 quick fill problems in, in my induction heating problem. Today, I kept it simple. I just had five stages, which is probably not enough to get an accurate, accurate solution, but it makes it easier to explain. So down on the lower level here, we have the quick fill transient magnetic problems. And we solve one. The, the front end asks for that one to be solved. And the, the results out of that are coupled to uh, analytically, analytically and we, we get, for example, the heat loadings from in the ferrites. We couple those into the, into the heat transfer. Then we solve the first heat transfer problem and the, the whole model gets hotter, the copper and the ferrite gets hotter. So we take the, the temperature results, the temperature out of the heat transfer, do some analytical calculations, for example, the Hotter copper we know has a higher, uh, higher resistivity, so it does all that analytically. And then it puts the properties back in the second quick field transient magnetic problem, solves that, then it takes those properties, converts them into what's needed for the, the heat, the thermal problem, and we have that step-by-step -step solution. And uh, when the, in this case, we've got a, a, a five stages. And when they're all solved, then we have a, a, a set of results. And it's very useful. I can show uh, how those problems actually exist, going down, down towards the bottom here uh, in numerical order. You can see that I've got five quick, five quick fill problems. And there is a prototype, what I called initial temperature. Uh, I, I, manually did the prototype problem mostly and then I'll show you how I programmatically made it uh, automatically generate the five problems. Same for the magnetic, the TM transverse magnetic. We've got five transverse magnetic problems and the prototype there is at the bottom which uh, was the source of all those, those initial problems. Uh, it's very useful that uh, for archiving results, as I said, I, I archive the properties used and I have all these these problems and what I do, I save that away as a, as a folder for future, future reference when I do a, a report on uh, a design for a client. Going back to the code. And again, I promise not to go too deeply into this. But firstly, uh, if you can see my pointer here, I'm uh, taking a, the initial, uh, initial temperature prototype problem and I'm calling some of my methods to update the properties of copper and ferrite and then I save that away.
And I'll do the same for the transverse magnetic. I, I op opened a prototype problem that was created manually and update some properties using some methods I wrote and then save that problem away. And then I wanted to solve those problems just to make sure that uh, they're going to solve stably and so on. So here is the code to solve the problem. You can see it's almost English. See, with the prototype problem there, I solve the problem, analyze the results and save it. So that's illustrating how active field syntax works. It uh, takes a little bit of getting used to initially, but after you've been working with it for some time, it uh, comes fairly naturally. It's in Visual Basic. And there is the solution for the prototype transit magnetic. 